Hi class, here's the video about this homework assignment baseline from English Reading Writing. So first of all, it's under uh, week uh, 7, class 1. There's week 7, class 1, homework. There's some other homework there too, which you should have checked out and done. And here it is. This is the video guide to the online theory practice stuff. And down below that is the is the um, baseline timer. So you you should have done this this top thing here, which is the written PDF where you handwrite with pencil uh, on this page. And then <clears throat> here you click here to get the finale file. Click on that. It should open right up. I've checked it. It's working fine. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about how to complete this assignment. Um, you will have already written, done the written homework, so you should already have a uh, baseline uh, that you've written in or the drum parts that you've written in. So you'll just be transferring those into Finale, and then you'll be adding a harmonic layer that wasn't in the original PDF. And that's that's what you have to do by the next class. Then, then in class together, you bring your computer to class. You don't upload this, you just bring it to class and in class together, we'll complete the top line. We'll do something. We'll do some various exercises with this top line. Okay, so for example, in this first over here, you had to write a bass line that matched the drum part. So the first thing to do is to listen to the drum part. Now there's two ways to listen to things in finale. One is to open up the window and do the playback controls. And that's okay. But it's got some limitations because it, you have to know how to tell it where to start. Sometimes it always goes back to the first measure and stuff. So a more flexible way to listen back to things is to turn that thing off and just remember the following two shortcuts. If you select a measure and then you press space bar and then click, you can start from any measure. So I could start from this measure or from this measure. Okay, that way. Another thing you can do is do Option plus Space Bar, and then you can go at a sl at the pace that you drag the cursor. And this is particularly good when you're checking out chords. Okay, so remember those two things. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. Okay, so we're going to write a bass line. At this point, you know how to do it. We're going to write a bass line that hooks up with the rhythm of the kick drum. Use simple entry palette. You don't show that. It's over here under the window menu. Get that showing. Also have the main tool palette showing. Uh, you choose your note values. Um, so let's start with uh, a quarter note, quarter note right here, and just put it right on the pitch, uh, the root of the of the of the chord. And then um, we need to have another bass note right here to match that rhythm. So you have to determine how long does this note have to be to. Uh, get up to that eighth note, and the answer is a dotted quarter. And you put in your eighth note, and you put in another quarter note, and dotted quarter note, you get make it a dot by hitting the period key, and then uh, you get to an eighth note. Okay, so. Now, if you want to know how I'm manipulating everything so quickly, watch the end of this video. I'll give you some finale tips. Okay, so like I said, just like this, it would be an, it would suffice as a baseline, but it wouldn't be as interesting. So let's go back and make it more interesting. Let's use some fifths. How about if we go down to a fifth here? And when we say fifths, we mean the fifth of the chord, not down a fifth, but the fifth of the chord. So the fifth of a D chord is an A, the pitch A. You could play the A here or the A there, but you got to use the fifth of the chord. Now, right before the chord change, this is a great place to do an approach note. So let's go ahead and do an approach note. You can do um, any of four notes, a half step from below, a whole step from below, a whole step from above, a half step from above. Um, I'm going to choose to do a half step from below, turning that into a D sharp. Here's another case where we could do a couple of roots, or we could use a fifth if we want. And then we're going to use an approach note. So let's use that as our approach note. And since that's already the fifth of this chord, let's just keep these both roots. And then this would be a nice approach back to there. So here's our bass line.
So you may have not written that exact baseline, but I'm just showing you the thinking um, that you can use. Okay, now the next stage is to fill in the harmonic layer. Now these are, um, if these were triads, I think you'd probably already be able to do it because you know how to do triads. So start with triads, okay? Start with root position triads. So as you can see, I have stacked up some triads here, okay? Now, the only uh, difference between a triad and a seventh chord is that it has one additional note stacked up, uh, like the building the snowman analogy there. So from here, this note is up a third, this is up a third, you just add another third, and you get the seventh of the chord. Same thing here, same thing here. Now you have seventh chords. But the seventh chords aren't voice led, so we've got to voice lead them now. Well, if we're going to start with this voicing, this voicing is perfectly okay the way it is, um, then we need to make sure that this is as carefully voice led as possible. Remember, you want to keep common tones. You look for common tones. Turns out there is a common tone. There's a D. So bring that D down, and now we have good voice leading. You see that? Come over here, bring that one down. Bring that one down, and that's cool. You could go to there too. That's that's a, that's a little little better than this, but either of those is okay. We'll do that, and then for our final one, we'll bring this one down, and we have a nice we have nice voice led seventh chords. Okay, it's now complete. Some of these other ones you need to write drum parts, so let's review how to do that. Let's go over here. This is one where you have to write a drum part. If you remember about drum parts is that you have to use two layers. You're in layer one right now, and the notes are black. Layer one is where we write the things that are played uh, by the drummer's hands. So that's the hi-hat, the snare. So the easiest thing is to just put in the hi-hat first. So you can see that I have an eighth note. I'm going to do eighth note hi-hats. I put in my first eighth note, and I, I, I move it around until it says hi-hat closed. That's what I want. And then I use the arrow to move over, and the arrow to move up until I get the hi-hat closed again. And then I click return, and just keep hitting return until I've got all my eighth notes. In. Then I go back, and I go to the snare line, and I put it on two and four. <clears throat> now I've got my hands. It's, the stems aren't in the right direction yet, but they will be in a minute. That's my hands. Now to do my feet, I need to change layers. So I come down here, see where it says layer one? I change that to layer two. Now I do my kick drum. <clears throat> now I'm going to try to do a kick drum pattern that picks up the main accents of this bass line. So I'm going to start with a quarter note. Then um, I never write a duration any longer than a quarter note because kick drum doesn't have sustain. So I put an eighth note here, put an eighth note rest because there's no attack in the in the bass there, and then I put another kick drum there, and then this ties over, but the kick drum cannot tie over because we don't have duration, so I just put a quarter rest there, and then here we have two bass notes. Now you have a choice here. You could have two kick drum attacks there, but it's okay to just have one and let the bass do it, the extra note there, so I'm going to do one quarter note there. <clears throat> See, these are the main attack points here. This is just like an extra pickup note. All right, then you go through the rest of the example like that. And you can see as soon as I put in that second layer, the other notes went up with stems. When you're finished doing your drum writing, don't forget to switch back to layer one. Otherwise, you'll get all these notes in layer two that you don't want. And there it is. That's what it sounds like. <clears throat> all right, so now that's the description of how to do this assignment. Now I'm going to talk about finale shortcuts to help you get to the finale. So the first thing to do is set up your laptop for optimal shortcuts. So you go to the, you go, you choose a note here on the Simple Entry palette. You go to the Simple Entry options. See what I did there? Then you deselect these first four. You click on Edit Keyboard Shortcuts. You go here and you make sure this is Laptop Shortcut Tables. If it's not, if it's something like this, you click and you change it to Laptop Shortcut shortcut table. You say okay. We're out of there. 
going to change. Now, what that means is that the numbers on, the, on your laptop will change the durations of your notes. So you can see this is a quarter note right now. Um, the durations are three is in 16th note, so I'm hitting a three. Um, four is at eight, five is a quarter, six is a half, and seven is a whole. So it makes it really easy to change durations. You don't always have to keep going up here. It saves you time. Just hit those numbers with your left hand. Okay. Now to put notes in, let's just say I'm doing it up here. Say I wanted a half note up here. I could just, or say I wanted a quarter note up here. I could just hit the number five. It's a quarter note. I put it in. Then say I want a another note there. And then I decide I want to change that pitch. Well, I'll use the arrow keys to go up and down. And when you uh, in, to the right place, then do an arrow over, and you have the cursor. Uh, you can move it around to the next pitch you want with the arrows. And then when you've got the right pitch, just click uh, re return, and it will be entered. And you can see that it starts to get really fast because your left hand is doing the duration. See, if I wanted to change that to an eighth note, I'd hit four. Then I'd move to where I want the note to be, and then click enter. And then maybe my next note is a. You know, another eighth note, and I want it to be up here, so I just arrow up to it and hit return. And it starts to be fairly fast. Okay, one more thing you can do to really speed things up is to go to System Preferences. And you're going to choose the icon that says Keyboard, and it's referring to your, your laptop keyboard. There's your keyboard. Click on that. And you're going to go to this button. Now, when you first see it, it'll probably be unchecked. It'll be like that. But you're going to check it. And that means that your function keys then in finale can be used for intervals. So that's here's how it works. Say I wanted to write a chord here. Say I wanted to do a half note chord of that E minor 7. Well, I use my, key, my number keys to change to a half note. And then I could go here. But then to build the chord, I have to sort of go like this. And it's a little bit laborious to hold it up like that. So instead, if I get my first note there, with my function keys now, they, they are intervals. So F3, for example, is a third. So I just hit F3, and I build up my chord really fast. Or say I was doing a second inversion or something where I needed a fourth. I could do um, one note there. I know I need a fourth. I just hit F4, and then a third. do intervals really fast. Okay, a few more shortcuts. Um, whenever you input notes, um, you can put in, the way you get a rest is by putting in the note value that you want and then simply hitting the R key. So if I want a half note rest there, I just put in half note and hit R. Change it into a rest. If I want to change my mind, I want to put it back to a note. I just hit R again. Arrows to go side to side <coughs> or down is important. Changing the pitch of a note um, with accidentals plus raises the pitch of a note by a half step, minus lowers the pitch by a half step. If you want to change a note into a natural, hit the N key for natural. If you're working with chords, if you select a chord with the arrows like this, or if you select a note, if you move up and down with an arrow, it just moves the pitch up or down. But if you want to move through a chord and get to a different pitch, you do command plus arrow. That allows you to go through different notes of a chord and, and then make adjustments. Then let go of command if you want to move the note or hit. Plus if you want to change the pitch or minus if you want to lower the pitch. Okay. It allows you to move through. Command plus arrow allows you to move through a chord. And then do an arrow. And sometimes you want to change a pitch by, you want to move it around a lot more like by an octave. Shortcut for that is shift plus arrow. So when you're doing voice leading, you want to decide that a certain note, say you decided that D was too too high, you could command arrow up to get to the D, and then do shift arrow to bring it down an octave. You can also take an entire chord, you can select an entire chord by doing command plus A, and then now you can move that whole. Alright, so that's it. Those are the shortcuts, the most useful ones.